Good afternoon. My name is Eric Apia, Executive Director of Apia Information Technology Systems. Today, um, I'm going to talk about um, cybersecurity in the digital age. And this program is Africa Digital Skills Conference 2020. Um, I'll begin by explaining what cybersecurity is. I'll begin by explaining what cybersecurity is. So um, I'll give a scenario. Um, we all have rooms in our houses that we don't want people to enter. And then in our rooms, um, before people enter into their rooms, you would want them to access and seek permission and then access them through a door which is locked by a key. Whatever information or, or items that we have in the room, it's our personal stuff. We wouldn't want outsiders to access um, and the information in or the items in our room. And that is um, the basic idea behind cybersecurity. So this, with cybersecurity, we look at uh, digital, that is the digital space, um, um, the internet, and then um, your phone, mobile phones, and how you are going to protect the data on your phone from outsiders or unauthorized users. So we are begin by explaining uh, what uh, cybersecurity is. According to Mink and others, 2013, uh, information security, another term for cybersecurity, is the process of enhancing the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information through preventive and responsive strategy. I'm going to explain uh, um, the the, it's called the CIA triad, the confidentiality, CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Um, Cybersecurity is an ongoing way effort to put, protect network systems, like I said, and computers and their data from unauthorized use or harm. On a personal level, you need to ask, uh, safeguard your identity, your data, and your computing devices. At the corporate level, it is everyone's responsibility to protect the data, the organization's reputation, data and customers. And then at the state level, national security and the safety and well-being of, of the citizens that are at stake. Now, um, let's talk about data classification. So we are saying that cybersecurity is with uh, the protection of data from unauthorized use. Now, I want us to look at um, the classification of this data we are talking about. So the data on our computers um, are classified into sensitive, confidential, private, proprietary, and public. When we say sensitive data, we mean data with the most limited access. A typical example is um, what goes on in Jubilee House. Their files, the information they send, whatever they see, it is highly class classified. Um, uh, what goes on in the national security um, at their top level, even top level management meetings are highly classified. Uh, uh, and meetings and their information is highly classified. That is what we term sensitive. On a personal level, a sensitive data is, um, and for example, nude pictures, a personal stuff about you, what you do in your room. Those are sensitive data. You would think nobody would want sensitive data out there into the public. And these are typically data that will do damage to the organization or the personal. Those, those, the, everything in your room, you wouldn't want people to know because it can damage your reputation or the, uh, the organization's reputation. When we say confidential information, 
confidential is information that is restricted to only people that are supposed to know. So in an organization, there is a certain information that is just between top management. The middle level and the lower level management don't know about that information. And that data is considered as confidential information. And with the private data, it's usually um, compartmental. It might not cause damage, but um, they are kept for private reasons. For example, is the human resources data. They don't cause damage, but they are kept private. Proprietary, these are data that belongs to organization. And um, it, it gives an organization a competitive edge over another organization. So they wouldn't want this information or this data to go out there because, for example, if MTN has a certain data that is giving them sales or more markets, more than Vodafone, they wouldn't want that particular data to uh, fall in the hands of Vodafone because if Vodafone gets to know about that strategy or that the, uh, information, uh, uh, they, they will keep them out of the market. And then we have public data. Public data oh, is the information that we all know. They are put out there in their social media and all that. So having uh, classified the data. Let's talk about um, the CIA trial that I mentioned. Earlier on, I mentioned that uh, cyber security, um, the, the pillars of cyber security are the CIA, which are the confidentiality. Uh, von Sons and Van Nekek, 2013, posted that all information security efforts are founded on three principles that I'm sharing with you right now, the confidentiality, integrity, and availability. When we say confidentiality, it's, it, it, it ensures that the privacy of data is restricted through access. So for example, um, in an organization, um, let me say uh, MTN, for example, um, within MTN organization, there is a certain information that is given to a person in a certain position. And this data might be on the network, but the restrictions that are placed on the data is to ensure that only that specified user access the data. And integrity assures that the information is accurate and not tempered with. And then availability ensures that the information can be assessed by authorized users whenever they want it. And so that's when, when, where, wherever you go here of CIA, this is not the CIA, US CIA. The, this is uh, uh, in cybersecurity. When you hear CIA, it's all about confidentiality, integrity, and availability of data. So for confidentiality, we are saying that uh, it's another word is privacy. Um, com company policies should limit authorized workers to assess information and ensure that if this information is assessed by only those who are authorized. What we mean by this is that um, in an organization, not everybody can assess every information. So the information should be limited and only authorized, especially the uh, uh, higher hierarchy are given access to certain information. And these information are not available to the people below. Integrity, um, with integrity is the accuracy, consistency and trustworthiness of data. So what we mean by that is that if I send information to you, we, sh we should be able to um, know that the information I sent is the exact information you are receiving. 
and the information has not been intercepted, modified, or altered by any third party. So a typical example is, if I'm leaving the room and I give the key to you, I'm expecting that you are the only authorized person to enter the room. If, or if I give you a file and I give you um, a, a, a padlock to lock it, and I give you the key, you are the only person to be able to open the file. The, the file from me to you, nobody should come in between, open it to read it or modify it. That is what we mean by integrity. So unauthorized access can be avoided by file permissions. That is putting permissions for specific users and user control. So um, user control is very, very important because you wouldn't want um, users that are not authorized to um, modify files and all that. And then for availability of data, we are saying that um, nobody would want to go to um, an ATM and then the ATM is not working. It's very frustrating. And it has never occurred to anyone that you go to google.com and google.com is not working. So what we are saying is that for availability, the data or the service should be available to authorized users when they need them. So this is done by maintaining equipment. In the case of an ATM, you see that they will do constant repairs and then the operating systems and software are up to date. Then you ensure that you create backups to ensure availability of network and data to authorize users. And then there should also be plans to recover quickly from um, disasters. So um, recently, a typical example recently is um, Facebook. We, we Facebook, WhatsApp. I mean, there are, there are variety of services that they offer. Um, went, up, went down and everybody was complaining. You could see that in such a case, it affected several businesses, several families. So we should be able to avoid that using uh, backup systems. And that is a typical example of the availability. So you see that when Facebook or WhatsApp or their services went down, we, we all got frustrated. The whole world, were, were, we, are, we are all affected. So what we are saying is that the service should be available when we need it. At any point in time where there is no availability, the, the, the CIA triad is broken and therefore needs to be checked. Now we are talking about cybersecurity. Um, who are, uh, I give an example that you have a room and somebody thieves would want to break in to take in whatever you have. Now, these are attackers in online systems. So we want to know the types of people or um, we call them attackers who would want to um, um, break into your systems, the network, your computers and all that. So attackers are groups or people who for finance, it could be financial gain or beneficial, exploit vulnerability. So, so for the, the very one that we, we hear is credit card fraud. They steal credit card online and they used to shop and all that. So at, um, 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 we are going to explain them one by one. So amateurs, these are, scripts, these are people who have no idea about what cyber security is, no hacking is, sorry. So what they do is that they go online and then they download um, um, hacking software that are used to launch attacks. And they use this software, they have absolutely no skill, but because of 
with the help of the software, you're able to click and then launch attacks. Um, you can use that to launch denial of service attack, which I'll explain later, and then um, other attacks to infect computers or networks. They may cause harm. Um, some of them to do it out of um, um, curiosity. They want to know what will happen and all that. They are not very professional. So it's not as if um, they are trying to hack your organization to um, request money from you. And then we have hackers. You have heard this word several times in movies and all around you. So um, hackers, this is a group of attackers who break into computers and computer networks to gain assets. So what they do basically is um, they launch attack into computer computers and computer networks. And then they attack your computer, they steal your files, and they may cause harm to your, your computers or your network. Okay, so they are classified into two. Um, some would want to break in and then steal your data or cause harm. Some will break in, will not cause harm, and just monitor. Some would want to um, uh, um, um, break in to test the, how vulnerable your system is. And that is what we call the right. So the, the ones that will break in to test how vulnerable your system is, they wouldn't take anything. With your permission, they are called the white hat hackers. And the gray ones are the ones that will, be not, without your permission, but they will break in, they will not take anything. And then we have the black hats. Those are the, the bad guys that we see in the movies. So the, with the black hats, those are the ones that will come into your systems. They will, um, um, you will boot your windows, it will not work. Um, they will infect your files. Your files will be corrupted. They will steal your data and all that. Those are the black hats. All right. So um, that is it. Let me move to the next time. This is the um, organized hackers. Aside the normal hackers, like individual people who break into systems, we have organized hackers. An example is Anonymous, if you have heard of, of them. They are a group of hackers located all around the world with a motive, okay? So the motive could be targeting of organizations. Some of them believe that um, the rich are getting more richer and therefore they hack into their systems to disrupt whatever they, are, they, they do. Some of them, um, uh, also targets of government agencies. And sometimes their intent may be bad, but it might also bring out certain information about um, um, government that people don't know. For example, um, the, uh, some hackers broke into US systems and brought, into, um, brought out some footage about what the military was doing and all that. Um, we have the hacktivists. We have the terrorists. The terrorists, those are uh, terrorists who use um, hacking purposely for causing harm. So they will recruit people using the, the internet and then they can target, um, for example, the the electrical grid of, of United States or whatever. And then we have the state-sponsored hackers. These are hackers that are groomed and sponsored by the states. So a typical example is China. China has an army of hackers that are sponsored by the states that are used to target other um, organizations or states for several purposes, espionage and all that. 
And then cyber uh, criminals are usually groups of professional criminals that focus on control, power, and wealth, like I said. They are very highly sophisticated and organized. So let's talk about threats. Um, with threats, while using your computer or the network as an organization, there are threats that are, are, are bound. These um, types of attackers or hackers or organized hackers that we are talking about pose threats to organization or personally your computer. And we are, we are going to talk about internal threats and then external. So in an organization, a threat or attack um, can originate from within the organization. Um, a typical example is an employee that accidentally we, um, clicks on a, a, a fishy link or accidentally reveals information to um, an outsider. Um, this is internal threat. Um, back in the days, I don't know whether it's called social engineering, they still do it. What, they do, what people do is that they can fake impersonation, they can impersonate someone and call an employee of an organization to demand um, data. It has happened with eBay. eBay, an account from eBay was hacked because um, the hacker pretended to be someone else. The hacker called an employee of eBay, pretended to be someone else, and then the employee revealed information that enabled the hacker to access the account, and then a lot of things ensued thereafter. Um, Internal threats could also be mishandling of confidential data. Organization wouldn't want um, their confidential data to be mishandled, not at all. So the, these are restricted data that is entrusted with, to a few people. But in, it can pose a, 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 a threat because um, there, there have been several instances where, um, especially our old people, they know less about computing and all that. And they may click on certain uh, links that will infect their computer with viruses and as such enable hackers to hack into their systems. So we are saying that these internal threats threaten the operations of internal service and network infrastructure. And then uh, facilitate outside attackers by infecting. So these um, internal uh, attacks, threats we are talking about, the employees themselves can bring into the organization um, pen drives that are infected to infect the organization's computer. And it's, 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 it's usually the internal attacks that are usually overlooked. And usually the internal attacks enables the external attacks to work because the internal attacks are overlooked. For example, if um, um, a CEO of an organization is using a, a pen drive, that CEO cannot be questioned. As such, any information that it goes to copy outside and brings it inside it or insert it into the uh, company's or the, um, uh, uh, system could infect the system. All right, whether accidentally or whatever. Okay, and then through email as well. The CEO can click on email and these that can infect uh, 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 the computer. And then for external threats, these are attackers. So they exploit vulnerabilities in the computer network or use social engineering. So exploits of vulnerabilities are usually through 
um, uh, sending of foul, malicious foul, uh, phishing and all that email for you to click on and then your system is attacked. Then they gain access to your computer. Or they can also use social engineering, like I said earlier on, where they call or they email you pretending to be someone else. And then your, your employee accidentally reveals the information and they use that information to gain access. Uh, let's look at um, software vulnerabilities. Um, systems that are built are not perfect. That is why you hear of updates or upgrades. So when you hear of updates, they are basically saying that we need to fix vulnerabilities or holes that are in the current system. Now, software vulnerabilities are usually introduced by errors in operating system or application code. That's why you hear up updates. Update is usually to fix the errors. Despite all efforts companies put into finding and patching software vulnerabilities, it is common. Vulnerabilities are common. Uh, you can find it in Microsoft, Apple, Android. That is why they keep releasing updates every single time. Because um, it is important that they patch those vulnerabilities. So there is this database that is dedicated to um, 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 all vulnerabilities um, that are found and are, are reported. Okay, so you can go to exploits slash DB dot com. And then So this is the database, as you can see, this is the database of all vulnerabilities. So you can see they are reported here by um, uh, the, the title, the type, whether it's a web app, um, an Android app or whatever, local, the platform, whether it's on Windows, it's the hardware, the PHP and the author. So this database helps people to exploit vulnerabilities and then publish these vulnerabilities over here. And these vulnerabilities um, will enable various organizations uh, like Windows and all that to patch or update uh, their systems. So you could see here, their latest ones, uh, there is a WordPress plugin. There is a employee daily. So this is a system. And these are vulnerabilities that are, so it is important that um, organizations or IT cybersecurity of organizations are always up to date with these vulnerabilities and check whether they are updates to update them because systems are vulnerable. Systems are not 100%. They, during their out, there are several vulnerabilities that come up and these vulnerabilities could hurt the organization if not checked. So it is important. Let's go back to now. Um, there is also hardware vulnerabilities. Um, design, hardware design flaws. RAM, for example, is essentially a capacitors installed very close to one another. There, there could be a design flaw, and it, it recently it was reported by Intel, a design flaw in the processor that enabled um, people to hack into uh, uh, the system. Usually, okay, you, you, let me tell you something new that um, you might learn from here. So when we say um, um, people are hacking into system, we only think of operating systems or 
the applications that we usually click on and all that. It is not entirely true. People can hack into the hardware. So for example, the, 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 the exploit that was discovered by Intel could enable uh, Chinese to um, um, access your computer using the hardware. Okay, so they had to recall and patch those, those, and then memory as well. So it's very, very important that the computer that you are buying, you, you read about it, especially for organizations and top, top CEOs and management is very, very important because your data is very, very important to us. Okay. Um, now let's look at the types of mal malware. We, are, we all know that um, every malware that we face in the computer, we, we say, oh, it's a virus, it's a virus, oh, everything is a virus. And we are going to learn from here that not everything is a virus. They are, they are all generally called malware, but there are several types of malware. And I'm going to explain them shortly. So um, malware is any code that can be used to steal data, bypass access control, cause harm to or compromise a system. So let me give you the type of malware. There is a spyware. Spyware are typically designed to spy on users. So for example, if, if you are in, um, let me talk about organization that I come to um, the personal level. So for organizations, MTN can decide to install a spyware on Vodafone machines to spy on them so that they can get their strategy and, and, and always be ahead of them. That is for organizations. For um, in our social setting, uh, people, even in relationships, you hear that, oh, Charlie, I want to install uh, something on my uh, spyware on my girlfriend or my wife's phone that will enable me to uh, read her chat or whatever. The people talk like that. And uh, interestingly, people are interested in those things. Okay, so these are what we call the spyware. So it enables, so it, when it is installed in a system, this spyware sends screenshots, uh, a keystrokes, whatever the person is typing, okay? And it collects data activities about what the person is using on the machine to uh, 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 the person, the information is being sent to who installed the spyware, okay? So they are often used to spy on people. So they include uh, trackers, keystroke collection, data capture, and all that. So spyware are very difficult to, to, to detect. Why? Because they often come as legitimate uh, 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 software. Okay, so the, the, the purpose and the intent of the spyware is to spy on you. So the, when the people who are building or programming the spyware, what they put in their minds first is that the software is not detected. So what they do is that um, the software usually come with legitimate software. So you go on, online, try to uh, install a specific software. This software in it has the spyware. And um, for military and, um, and espionage purposes, this spyware, you have heard of in movies that uh, CIA is spying on China, China is spying on um, US, US is spying on Russia and all that. They use spyware, okay? So they use spyware to, to, to spy on uh, um, other military systems so that they could develop their own. And then um, most importantly, um, what they call espionage, the, state secrets or organizational secrets. 
So for example, um, Apple secrets can be stolen by a, a, a Chinese. Then they will develop the same uh, 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 device. It happens all the time. Now let's move to hardware. So hardware um, is a form of um, malware, but then they are not typically designed to cause some. What they do is that they are typically designed to advertise to you. So they send this thing, you have seen it on your computer, but you might not have known it's an hardware. Have you seen that if you use Windows um, machine, laptop for a long time, you keep installing, downloading, you realize that um, it gets to a time where some adverts begin to pop up even when you are not using a machine. So it's, it's like that. They typically come as legitimate software, but they are installed because they know you wouldn't want them to uh, show adverts to you. They are hidden and installed on your machine. Then for all you know, you begin to get adverts on your, and this advert generates money for the people who do that. Now there is a bot. A bot is from the word robot, okay? So um, if you use service a lot, you realize that a lot of um, 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 attacks come from bots or robots. These are malware designed to automatically perform an action, usually online. Sometimes they are harmless, and then uh, sometimes they are malicious. They, they can be used to. So these are, um, they perform automatic, they are designed to perform automatic and large scale um, and activities. If they are on the large scale, they, they, they are called um, botnets. And these are malicious. They, they are used for denial of service attacks and all that. I'll explain that later. Now let's talk about ransomware. Ransomware is recently used um, by um, hackers to infect computers. Now let, let's look at what ransomware is. You might have heard about it before, or you might have known someone who has been affected by a computer. So ransom, it comes from the word ransom. Ransom means um, they hold on to your data or and demand ransom or money from you to release your data. So this malware is designed to hold a computer system or data it contains captive until payment is made. Ransomware usually works by encrypting data in a computer and the key is unknown to the user. So they, they, they encrypt your system and can't do anything with your system. Uh, sometimes you, you can't even format the system. So the system becomes unusable unless you pay them the money, then they give you the key. It is not advisable to pay uh, because um, when you pay them, uh, you, you give them an incentive to continue uh, their attacks. Um, ransomware is not uh, typically a nice thing uh, where it attacks uh, hospital systems, for example. So imagine um, hospital systems, critical systems, life support systems that are supposed to ensure a patient is alive and these systems are being attacked. Uh, um, the hospitals cannot use the systems as, as such and patients will die. And the, these attackers are demanding money from the hospital and all that. It's not a nice thing. It is not advisable to pay ransom as well. Ransom. This we have a scareware. This is a type of malware designed to persuade the user to take specific action based on fear. 
So a scale where pops up and then resemble Windows dialog. I remember um, in those days, you will receive several prompts. This error, 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 error. Yes, the error would never leave your machine. And it will repeat itself several times, loading onto the memory such that your computer becomes unusable. These are all forms of attacks. Now there is root kit. So uh, root kit is a malware that is designed to modify the operating system to create a back backdoor. So we earlier on spoke about people attacking your machine, getting access to your machine when they are not authorized. Now, what, what enables them to attack your machine is that they use root kit, so a certain um, a file that, are, that is downloaded to your machine via email, unaware, or file that is sent to you, you click on it, your machine is infected, you don't know. Then this file or rootkit gives access to the attacker backdoor so that they can access the computer remotely. And usually they, they take advantage of software vulnerabilities to perform several uh, activities and modify system files so that they are not caught, all right? And they also try to avoid system forensics and monitoring tools and even antivirus. Now the word virus, like I said earlier, we often use the word virus for all of these things, but that's not the case. The virus is a malicious executable code that is attached to executable files, often legitimate programs. Most viruses require end user activation. It can be either be harmless or destructive. So harmless in the sense that um, it's not causing, you wouldn't see it cause harm to your system. You can use your system normal, okay? So an example is, the virus that replicates itself. And there is a, a virus that attacks the destructive one. This one modifies or deletes data. And as for the, this one, we have all um, encountered it before. When you are using Windows machine, your, your you encounter viruses, you, you often have to install antivirus or format your machine and all that. And then there is a Trojan horse. A Trojan horse is a malware that carries malicious operation under the guise of desired operation. This malicious code exploits the privileges of the user. And then they are often found, uh, found in image files, audio files. And then this Trojan horse often binds itself to non-executable files and they replicate. Okay, and they, they are worms. Worms are malicious code that replicate themselves by independently exploiting vulnerabilities in the networks. So these worms come into the, assist, the network systems and they are able to spread across the network. And they, because they are always replicating, they slow down the network. For us, the virus requires a host program to run. Worms can run by themselves. They don't even require you to launch a program other than their initial infection. And then they are able to spread quickly and affect uh, several parts of the network. And then worms are responsible for some of the most devastating attacks on the internet. In 201, the code red worm had infected 658 servers. Within nine hours, 
the worm had infected over 300,000 servers. So that's the work of a worm. When they infect a server or a network, they replicate quickly. Within hours, all the network is infected. Right. So, and then there is another one, man in the middle. The man in the middle attack allows the attacker to take absolute control over the device without the user's knowledge. So, a typical example that goes on is. Gmail accounts. So for rich people, um, um, the hackers try to hack their Gmail and then monitor. So without the user's knowledge, the hacker has um, access and be monitoring. So the moment they hear that um, an organization or, or the the person who owns the email has received an email that says that they should send a bank account for the money to be deposited. They quickly write um, an email and then put their uh, financial information there for the bank, for the transfer to be sent to them. This happens a lot, it happens a lot. Happens a lot. Okay, so um, how do you know you have been affected by malware? So usually there is an increase in CPU usage. You can see that um, you are not really using your laptop or computer, but your system is running. It's either heating or you can hear the fan. Uh, the, the fan. And there is a decrease in computer speed because there is an increase in CPU usage. You are not using a machine for anything. You can see that the speed has decreased. The computer is either crashing or freezing. And then there is a decrease in web browsing speed. Um, the, the network connections are not working. And then you can see that files are either modified or deleted. And then in other instances, you can also see that there are presence of unknown files, programs or desktop icons. These are, they are also unknown processes. And this can be detected using Activity Monitor or the Tax Manager on Windows. Activity Monitor is a uh, Mac machine. And then you can also see that emails are being sent without the user's consent. Now, social engineering. Social engineering, I explained earlier, is attempts by individuals to manipulate others into performing actions or revealing confidential information. A typical example is the mobile money fraud, which we will go on to. So they call you or they send you an email and then tell you to pretend they are someone else. In, in mobile money fraud case, they pretend they are from MTM mobile money and then ask you to send your Momo pin or whatever so that they can um, Withdraw money from your account. And that's social engineering. So we come to mobile money fraud. Mobile money fraud is very important because this is on the rise and there seem to be um, a frustration by the telcos, especially MTN. Um, and it is sad because um, a lot of people are being affected by the mobile money for despite the massive um, education and information that is out there. Um, a friend of mine got duped to the tune of 5,000 cities because of mobile money brought. 
there was not, it, it occurred in a space of six days. The person was constantly talking to my friend for six days. And my friend too didn't tell anybody before he realized they, ah, no, they, they, they were not real people and they had already taken the money. He had already sent the money to them. This is not a nice thing to encounter. So what happens during mobile money fraud? Usually you receive prompts from these um, people that are trying to uh, hack or withdraw money from your mobile money account. And this is a form of social engineering. Sometimes you receive uh, an SMS and they call you to tell you that your SIM has been blocked and you must reveal your PIN or whatever, or enter a certain PIN or code in order to retrieve your account. And by the time you realize you have made that way with the money on your mobile money balance, it has affected a lot of people. The solution to this mobile money fraud is when it looks too, it sounds too good to be true, just hang up, just hang up and contact someone else, speak to someone about it. It is very, very important because um, psychologically, when they are talking to you psychologically, you are not able to say no or yes. But if you talk to someone else, because the person is not in your shoes and the person has not been offered the offer given to the person, to you, sorry. The person is able to think straight and tell you that, no, this is fraud. No, this could be true, let's fraud them, right? It is very, very important. When you, you have any call or message, you know, it's not, don't hang up. Don't reply the message, ignore. Okay, it is very, very important. So you could see here on the left side is a prompt from uh, um, someone received a prompt. He said, this is a social media post from Facebook. The person said, I just received this on my phone. Has anyone experienced this before? Well, I just deleted it because it's scary. Because you receive this prompt and you wouldn't know, you just enter your mobile money pin and you have sent that amount, 300 CDs to the, the, the scammer. Okay. And another one is identity theft fraud. With the identity theft fraud, um, a recent word for identity theft fraud on Twitter I hear is catfish. People create identity um, that they are you, they are, they are this celebrity and all that. And they use this, they usually post pictures of the celebrity a lot. So people begin to think that that is the celebrity's account. And then they use the account to send uh, emails or messages and to people demanding for uh, money to be paid to them. Another one that is going on is the WhatsApp. People hacking into other people's WhatsApp account, and then they use their account to ask for money from their relatives, friends, and all that. It is also identity theft fraud. Right? How do we deal with these things? Ensure you have. Um, you report, typical example is report fake accounts belonging to um, uh, scammers, report them. Another one is um, for the mobile, for the WhatsApp identity theft, ensure that you have a two-factor authentication turned on. What I mean is that there is a, when you go to security privacy, there is a, a security method that whoever wants to um, access your number 
will have to um, a certain SMS is sent into your phone, and then you are aware that um, your phone is being used for a method like that. And you should also know that these scammers have advanced, and they, they can even call you pretending to be from WhatsApp or whatever, and tell you that there's a certain code. When you hear anything like that, just hang up. Or just ignore. I get messages like that a lot. I just ignore, I will not even reply. And when I get a call, the person is telling me that um, there is this number. The moment I hear anything like that, I just hang up. It's very, very important because you might not know you, you when you fall prey, it's not a, a not a good thing. And there is also page identity theft. Someone can steal your page. It is this thing is very, very important because there are several business pages that are being stolen by that are being stolen by these scammers. And when they steal your page, they use your page to do a whole lot of things in your name. And it's not good. Uh, example, this particular um, 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 scam method, they pretended to be uh, uh, from Facebook. You could see Facebook Corporation, and they gave a link. The moment you click on the link, they take your page, right? Let's talk about other forms of scam. All right, so the other forms of scams and um, phishing, for example, where the on the right side you could see that um, this mess, this email is purported to be to come from uh, Netflix, that the person should try a new payment method. So the moment, so this looks like it's from Netflix. But the moment you click on it and then you enter your credit card details, it goes to the, the hacker, all right? And there are other forms of scams as well. On LinkedIn, people pretend to be ministers and all that, and they use their account to, the, the one, the ones, uh, okay, the one, they guy, Pretended to be honorable or slawusu or something like that. And then said, I should pay an amount of money to come for government contract and all that. All these are scams and they are not good. They are not good. People should be aware of these scams and then avoid them. Why the need for cyber security? Why is it important to? prevent people from accessing uh, data when they are not authorized. Um, if you can see here, uh, this news was uh, in August 2018, where hackers broke into mobile money systems and stole billions from Airtel, NTN in Uganda and Standing Bank, right? So, they, they broke into and stole people's money. And that is why we need to protect our systems. We need to update our systems. They're very, very important. On your right, you see a, an article from Ghana Web that says that nine in court over um, 326 million Ghana cities, UMB scam. Um, these people transferred money, wired money, and all that bank transfer. They steal money from banks and deposit into their account to spend and all that. It is important cybersecurity is taken into consideration. The, the organizations must, especially the banks, must improve upon their security in order for these things not to happen. People are breaking into mobile money systems. Uh, scammers are breaking. People need to have confidence in our systems. And um, in the, the parts of, in the recent times, uh, post COVID, everything is online. Everything is digital now. 
it's important that organizations um, take key interest in cyber security and they need to protect data from unauthorized users. An article here from Ghana World as well. Six bars turned over 46.1 million bank fraud. So these are disturbing. If you look at the huge money that is involved, that people are able to break into bank systems and steal this huge money. It is, it is important to our banks protect their systems going forward. Now let's talk about phishing. Phishing occurs a lot. If you use an email, you would have received um, an email from people purporting to be from several organizations. It could be from PayPal, it could be from other spam messages telling you that this money is here, your account is this, enter your credit card, enter your password, and all that. So I would want to explain what phishing is. Phishing is a malicious uh, intent of sending fraudulent email disguised as being from legitimate or trusted source. So we can send you an email that is purported to be from NTN or even your bank. And then the moment you click on it and enter your details, we get your details. The message intent is to trick the recipient into installing malware or sharing personal information because um, they use that information to hack into the, the, the victim's account and then steal money or personal information. Sometimes they give you link to a fake website and then so for example, a fake PayPal website that asks you for your password, the moment you enter your email, your password, the, your information is sent to the hacker and you are redirected to the legitimate. So you wouldn't know. It is important you cross check the website that you are visiting. Very, very important. A typical example is here. So I received, this is an email I received from um, a hacker that my PayPal account has been limited. Now look at this email. It looks legitimately like PayPal. There's nothing to suspect, okay? So if you click on it and then you realize that um, you are on a site that looks just like PayPal, but by the time you realize your information is gone, these people are that good. So it's very, very important, especially people in organizations, top, top organizations, let's check these things. You might not know who is infected, you might not know the information that is given out there. Very, very important. Now, let's talk about um, vulnerability exploitation. Exploiting vulnerabilities is another common form of infiltration. Attackers scan computers to gain knowledge about them. So before someone wants to um, attack you, the person doesn't just click on something and says, um, I want to attack you. No, the person must first of all have a motive. Why do I want to attack this person? The person will begin gathering information about you. So the first step is to gather information about the targets through either social engineering or a, a, a port scanner or whatever. The goal is to learn as much about you as possible. Then um, the second step is knowing the operating system that you use or the system that you use so that they will be able to attack. Okay, the third is knowing the version and then the vulnerabilities that are specific to that version of operating system that you use. 
when the vulnerability is found, they, they use for, they look for previously written exploits to attack you. All right, let's talk about denial of service attack. Now, denial of service attack is a type of attack where um, requests, huge requests are sent to a network such that the network is unable to process causing uh, traffic and interrupting the network. So as such, the, the systems will be unavailable to users. So there's a, a huge traffic and then there's, there's uh, malicious formatted packets, right? Those or uh, denial of service attacks are considered major risk because they can easily interrupt communication and cause significant loss of time and money. These attacks are relatively simple to conduct and even by an unskilled attacker. Let's talk about advanced persistent threat, APT. One way in which infiltration is achieved is through APT or advanced persistent threat. They consist of multi-phase long term hidden or advanced operation against specific targets. So these are used by military or um, state against state. So they install specific hidden software into other systems. And these systems are unable to detect and Therefore, they are there for a very long time and they are monitoring their activities. It is well-funded and it targets organizations, nations for business and political reasons. Usually related to network espionage, APT is, the purpose is to devise customized malware onto one or multiple targets and remain undetected. And let's talk about protecting your privacy and data. Um, it is important um, that we protect our privacy and data on our machines. How would you feel if your laptop, that you know that your laptop that you are using, somebody's watching you through the camera or the person is watching what you are watching on is, is able to view whatever you are viewing on your laptop. How would you feel? Would you feel okay using the machine? I don't think so. So these are steps to avoid that. You must keep your firewall on and then always use an antivirus and anti-spyware updated version, always manage your Windows operating system, always update them. And then use pass, unique password for each online account. Encrypt your data, back up your data, and do not share too much information on social media. Why? Because too much information on social media gives ha hackers more information about you and they use that information to attack, launch the attack about. Thank you very much. That's all for today. If you have any questions, I'll be grateful to answer them. Please raise your hand if you have any questions. Let's make it interactive. If you have any questions concerning the mobile money fraud, um, 
how to protect yourself against hackers and all that. Happy to share with you. You can ask your questions. You can use. You can unmute yourself and then ask your question. Hello? Okay. The absence of any questions. Okay. Right, okay, so Florence Abbas says, I really enjoyed your lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Florence. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'm here. I'm here to allay your concerns. Hello. Yeah, hello. Yeah, please. My question borders on WhatsApp. And okay. there was a time I received a video call. I don't know where the person uh, got my number from. But the moment uh, you try to also uh, speak with a person, you see that the person is showing uh, his nude video. So how do we deal with such a situation? OK. Um, you remember the last thing I shared was do not share so much on your social media. Um, such um, situations occur when, if you check your uh, Facebook, um, if you check your Facebook contact or number, check whether it is public or private. That is where they get the numbers from. So on your Facebook profile, you, you, you probably have used your number to um, set up your Facebook account. And by default, it is public. So you can change it to um, private because when it gets the number from there, um, they can, I'm usually it's from Asia, right? Those Asia people usually do that. Yeah, it was a foreign number. Though. Foreign number, yes. So expect you, um, and people have reported a lot from India and all that. So what you have to do is that, first of all, ensure that your number is private okay. on social media. It is very, very important. The second thing is that I always do this. The moment you see that this, that is what is happening, cut the call, block the number. Okay. It really, really helps. When I get any message that you want to scam me, Anything I'm not interested in, I just block you. It helps a lot because fine, you don't know who is calling you with a foreign number. You have received it. But the first thing you've seen is a new thing. You are not interested in, just hang up and block the number. Yes, number. Thank you very much. Thank you. But it is also important that you Ensure your you don't share too much on social media. The number, the number is very, very important. Is there any other question? 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 Mr. Prince. Hello. Hey, do you have a question? Um, good afternoon. I yes. joined in late, uh, but then from where I started hearing from, I would like to know, um, how, how do people get uh, details to change people's password, most especially on Facebook? OK, so from Facebook, um, I've received a lot of um, reports like that to recover accounts and all that. So they use what we call phishing. So usually um, with Facebook, they send uh, links for you to click on. 
usually it's either pornography or whatever, something that will entice you to click on. The moment you click on the link, they have access to your account. Okay, so it is very, very important that any link that you are not familiar with, don't click on it. Have you realized that when even on WhatsApp, people, um, somebody's number will send you some link that does not even make sense. Have you realized that? Yes, yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Uh, Facebook, people will send you some number that uh, a link does not even, the moment you click on that link, because that person's account has been affected, the moment you also click on it, the number, your line will also be affected. Oh, okay. Uh, so don't click on any link you are not sure of. When mm. anybody send you any link, ask the person, what's it about? The person is saying that click on the link to gain whatever money, whatever money. Ask the person, how much have you got? Let me look at your bank account. Have you re <laughs> received the money? Yeah. Mm. You understand? Because they use that a lot. Click on this thing to, um, then people will be sharing it. Click on this thing to, um, sometimes it's job, fake job opportunity. Sometimes it's fake total, that is uh, total anniversary. And they are sharing iPhone. What, 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 what? Okay. Click on this ne link. Next, 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 Ghana and things. And you understand. Uh -huh. yeah. So, those, make sure you don't click on any of the links. It's very, very important. It's very, very important. The moment you click on the link, they have access to your account. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other question? Any other question? Okay, so with the absence of questions, we we'll bring this meeting to an end. I'm grateful to Mobile Web Ghana for hosting me and making me a speaker of this program and giving me this rare opportunity um, as the director of APIA information technology systems to give a lecture on cyber security. I'm indeed grateful. And I look forward for a future partnership. Bring this meeting to us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.